Hello everyone, this is a little video here. We'll show you how you can use Graphmatic, Graphmatica to graph your polar functions. So when you open up Graphmatica, this is pretty much what you'll see, something like this. And uh, you don't really have to change anything. You can do all your polar graphing just right here on this grid. All you have to do is go up into the uh, equation bar there and type in your equation. Let's say something like r equals 3 sine theta, but in Graphmatica, the, uh, they use parentheses t. So instead of theta, the Greek letter theta, it's just the letter t. Make sure you uh, put parentheses around it. When you hit enter, there it is. There's 3 sine theta. You can go in now and change the equation. Let's say 3 sine 3 theta to see what that looks like. And that's a different equation. So it didn't lose the other equation. It just kept it right there. And um, uh, so this is how you can type in your equations. Graphmatica is nice in that it allows you to do something that your graphing calculator does not allow you to do. Let me just uh, delete this graph here. Um, this one and I'll graph the other one. Uh, to get rid of that, just delete the graph. Have the, the equation up there in the bar highlighted. Press the delete graph and the graph goes away. Now, in Graphmatica, you can do things like this. R squared equals something. And if you say something like 3 sine 2 theta, uh, theta excuse me, uh, 2t, all right, and graph that, you get what's called a lemniscuit. You can look that one up in the book, lemniscuit. That's how that's, uh, that, that's the name of that graph. And that's how you spell that, lemniscuit. And that's what it looks like, a little infinity symbol kind of sideways. And you can mess around with this equation up here to change the size or the angle that it's sitting at. So that's kind of a cool little graph. Okay, so uh, we will, uh, that's something that you can do on a Graphmatica with this R squared here, which you can't really do on a graphing calculator. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so I got rid of that right now. Let's take a look at another thing that you guys like to do sometimes on your uh, polar graphs, and that is uh, restrict somehow or change the domain of the function. And there's a way to do that on Graphmatica also. So let's say we have this uh, equation r equals, and I'm going to use a little spiral, I'm going to say 0 0.2 times t. And that will give us a spiral. Now I hit enter, that's all I get. Not very impressive. But if I wanted to make that spiral bigger, what I'd have to do is to change the domain of the function. Right now my domain is set at 0 to 2 pi. That's the default domain for all these polar functions. But if you go up here to options, and take a look at that. Well, we get something pretty uh, pretty interesting here called theta range. Click that, and you get this little dialog here. Start of range, end of range. So that's your domain for your function. It's a little unfortunate that they use the word range, and this really is the domain of the function. So let's say instead of going from 0 to 6.28, which is about 2 pi, let's say we change it to uh, 3 pi. And there's an easy way to do that. Just click 3 and then click the uh, little box there that says times pi. And hit OK. And there you go. We just added another um, another part to the spiral. And we could go in and change that again. We could say, oh, that wasn't big enough. I want to have um, I want to have it go up even higher. Let's say we say to 5 pi, 5 times pi. Let's see what happens then. And is that big enough? OK. You can change the domain that way with this this thing right here. Once again, it's in options, theta range. I'm going to put it back to the default 0 to 2 pi. Because the next thing I want to show you is that um, you uh, the other concern that, that is really uh, very common for students is to uh, how do you take your graph and put it on a piece of paper? So I want to show you that there, the Graphmatica allows you a pretty easy way to do that also. Let's take a graph like um, R equals just kind of a simple polar rows. Let's say um, 5 times cosine of 4 theta. So there's 5 cosine 4t. I hit enter and I get this 8 leafed uh, polar rows. And if I wanted to graph that uh, by plotting it out, by plotting out the x and y points, I've got two options on graph now. One of them is to go up here to the tools and this thing here called coordinate cursor. All right. 
So this is pretty handy. You've got, you can take the coordinate cursor, and I'm going to start it, uh, the, my, my cursor right there at 0, 0. And if I follow uh, the cursor around the curve, I'm getting the x and y values down here in the lower uh, left-hand part of the screen. And you'll know that you're, you've got the right ones. The cursor can kind of follow along the curve pretty easily. But you also see there that uh, it says, at this point right here, it says uh, 2.74,0.68 on r equals 5 cosine 4t. And that's the function that we want. So we can just kind of have it travel around, and you can see where these x and y values are. You, can, you don't have to plot every single one, but uh, obviously that would be impossible. But you can pick out the ones that you want to really focus on and, you know, get these, uh, these x and y values of these points. And you can do a pretty darn good job that way of drawing your curve just by plotting out x y points. There's another way also, which may or may not be that helpful. If you go up here to view, uh, there's something called a point table. You click that. And over here, you get a set of x and y values. Now, these are for, um, for, for just these specific theta values here. You can see they've gone from 0 to 2 pi in increments of 1, 6 pi, or pi over 6. And so these are the x and y coordinates for the, for the points for these particular theta values. Um, it's, it may be that those are, are good enough, uh, but, you may, but if you look at it, uh, 1 sixth pi, for example, um, the first point that you get, well, the first point you get is 5, 0. That's right here. Okay. And then the next one, as theta, uh, increases from, um, from 0 to, let's say, pi over 6, the next point is all the way down here where x is negative 2, which is about, right, about there someplace, and y is negative 1.25. So that, that's right about there. So a lot happened between here and here that doesn't show up in this point table over here. So the point table may or may not be that um, that useful for you. You could, if you wanted to, go back up to view, excuse me, go to options and change and pick settings, and you can adjust the increment of, uh, of those by, by choosing point tables in this global settings box, point tables tab, Go down here to custom increment and change this. You could change it to, uh, right now it's pi over 6, but you could say pi over 12. And that would give you twice as many points. Um, you click OK there, uh, close out of this point table right there, and then just to kind of open it up again. I'm going to view the point table to see what I mean. Now we've got twice as many uh, points, x, y points. Um, it's kind of up to you whether you choose to use the point table method or this uh, cursor coordinate cursor tool, which is really nice, I think, because um, it will just follow right along the curve with you. You can pull it off the curve, right? But it will it'll basically uh, travel along the curve if you kind of help it with your mouse or with your um, with the trackpad on the computer, whatever you're using. Okay, I think that's about it for now. Um, Good luck, and uh, hope that helps. Bye.